Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host Gamer K, and this video is one that I was contemplating doing years ago, but only finally got to it. Now, this at this time, in my last year of high school, which would be 2013, the game from Japan Studio, Puppeteer, came out for the PS3. And yes, it inevitably, it was the one of the final games for the old console and its predecessor from the from the same studio knack came on to the new uh, uh console ps4 and then a sequel came years later and oh boy did they make a bad decision on that puppeteer is one of my favorite platformers and it is one that i always encourage people in order to play if they have kids or they're looking for some Thing creative, something fun, unique, and all honesty, a little challenging if you're not good at platformers. And best part of the game is the boss fights. The majority of the boss fights are either mini bosses in se sections of the game, and then the Chinese zodiac animal bosses, the generals of the Moon Bear King. And each one has their own patterns, has their own attack style, and their own atmosphere for their boss fight. So I thought it'd be necessary to do my top, well, not my top, ranking every single boss in the Puppeteer game. And are there a couple of rules? Uh, not really. I'm including every boss fight that is technically a boss fight in a game. Because the only enemies in the game are the purple grubs as uh, being shown right here, if possible. And all honesty, the bosses make up for the lack of enemies in the game. The only thing, though, is... Yes, I will be including every single boss. And there's 23 bosses in total. And I will be ranking them all from the worst to the best. And again, this is all my opinion and my own things with the game. And 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 for the, la and for the uh, sake of me not being... I uh, kind of that I I kind of like doing things a certain way. I will not be putting in the numbers for each for each uh boss because okay, you know what? Maybe I'll just I won't do them in Roman numerals. Yeah, I won't do them in Roman numerals cuz that's going to be a pain in the butt. All right. Let's start. This is Gamer K's ranking every boss in Puppeteer. And also, for those of you who have not played Puppeteer in the last decade or so, uh, I would highly advise it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's just one of my personal favorite games that isn't seen a lot of in the spotlight. Let's get to it. Starting off the list is General Monkey, which would be the first curtain of the, f of the seventh act, final act of the game. Yeah, the levels are all in, in uh, chapters and curtains. So there's three curtains to a chapter. And oh boy, Monkey being the last of the generals to be beaten is all honesty. All yeah, all honesty. He sucks. Even though he's been a threat since chapter 5 and the and the end of chapter 4, yeah, Monkey does not do very well. It's basically a section in the game where you have to go through like dodge things and it's one of those rail shoot not rail shooter uh i can't really explain it very well it's one of the sections in the game that's in every chapter that's in every uh chapter and it's not even technically a boss fight all you got to do is just dodge attacks dodge the environment and then use your scissors to cut the uh, the uh to cut through the level until you finish them off and it's terrible. Also, there are things in the boss that because Puppeteer utilizes the head mechanic where each head has its own special ability somewhere in the, somewhere in the game, some of these bosses can defeat be defeated easily or the battle can be made a lot easier by using the head which kind of litigates the boss fight. And all honesty, I will be putting some of those into account. But again, those are all optional if you're going for the headhunter thing. But if you want to actually fight the boss yourself, then don't do them. Because then that's where my ranking fixes all the instant win issues. For one, if you get the UFO head before this section, 
you can basically don't have to dodge anything. The force field will basically just... It will basically just nullify your need to do anything, and it will just block every single attack. I am not freaking joking. That's why Monkey's so all on the list. When his boss fight is this late in the game, and it's not even a proper boss fight, you gotta put this ape in his place. So, you damn dirty ape, get off this list. Number 22 on the list is General Snake. The third, the third general boss fight is... Again, he's he's right before Monkey, but he's the one of the largest bosses, but it's not even a boss fight. It's not. Also, in the majority of the boss fights, there there are QTE moments near the end of the boss fight in order to give it that theatrical grand spectacle that this game does exponentially well. And yes, it is Q and T, QTE, but it's all done very well. Snake is near is right near the bottom of the list because his whole fight is it's not even a fight. He's basically his own level. He is the end of chapter 2 and it is literally a level where you're basically on his back fighting enemies and getting swallowed by him and then we have to ride General Rat out of his stomach. And then once we do that, we just get a quick QTE moment, and yeah, the one of the the second biggest boss in the game, and he is practically a level, and the final sucks. Yeah, that's all I've got to say. Okay, I'm really going for these lame jokes. Let's continue. Number 21, the Pawn Weaver. Our first legitimate boss fight in the game, and it shows you the ropes of how to defeat the Weavers, which are the, the uh, mini-bosses in, in certain chapters, which contain the souls of some of the, ch of the children that the Moon Bear King spirited away to the moon. You, seriously, if, you're, if you think Rocky Horror Picture Show is hard to follow, well, not high, Puppeteer is a masterpiece that needs to be seen. The Pawn Weaver is basically just a weak boss fight that doesn't do that many attacks and basically shows you how to deal with them. You gotta slice their fabric and then slice their body parts and then when the souls come out, you gotta get them all. Try to get them all in one go if you can or else it will they will all go back and you will have to redo the process. In all honesty, the Weavers, the Weavers all range in appearance depending on the chapter that you're in. So... The pawn is over. Let's get to it. Number 20. Number 20. The Vile Vine Core. This is literally the only boss fight that... It, it feels like it's a boss fight, but at the same time, it's kind of lame. Near the end of the game, throughout the... Uh, uh, the castle, the White Castle level, vi the vile vines have that were in uh, the first chapter with the Moon Bear King's castle have infected the White Castle, and you got to get rid of the giant core, which basically looks like the giant core, the giant plant from uh, what was it? Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. If it was mutated and it didn't have singing. Yeah. Basically all you got to do is just reflect the light directly into the eyes of the of the plant and just go through a couple little sections and basically you just got to snip the bulb and finish it off. All I know is we get better get a botany badge for this mission for this boss fight. Number 19, General Rat. The smallest and the lamest of the bosses that technically we don't kill. Yeah, it's revealed in the end of General Snake's chapter that the Moon Bear King kills Rat for being such a lying, little, conniving little turd. Being a salesman. Wow, a rat as a salesman? I wonder where that creativity came from. But basically, the boss fight with General Rat takes place in the treetops of the, of the, of the Moonwood Forest. And all honesty, it's not that bad. 
All you gotta do is just avoid the purple the purple toxin that he shoots out of his jetpack and just throw a bomb on him once in a while. The end of his boss fight is pretty lame too because like Monkey, we don't get a QTE moment from him. All we gotta do is just throw bombs at him in the air and then just snip his, pow his jetpack power. Although I do like the character of General Rat, the boss fight is less than desirable. And there were smaller bosses that had a bigger impact. So... Ah, <sighs> this just goes to prove that just because you're a rat does not mean you're going to get fame. Yeah, I'm looking at this guy. Coming in at number 18, the Cop of Gairu. A kind of a mini boss of chapter two. Basically, the purple slime has turned this Cop of Gairu woman into... Yeah, she's going crazy. Basically, you, you're in the swamp area of the, of the level, and you basically just gotta throw, fly over her, and when her head opens up, just throw a bomb in there. No, seriously, that's, just do that like three times, and the boss fight's over. Kapagairu is definitely a boss fight I would put on a list of boss fights that did not need to be in a game, but they just did it to add a little extra th extra into the game. Coming in at number 17, the Dark Lantern. Another... Oh, no, wait, this isn't a we... Wait, is this a weaver? No, the Dark Lantern is a get... A, seriously, Chapter 2 bosses are low on the list here. Mostly because they teach us about how to use... Mostly because they're really easy to do, especially with the patterns. Because they teach us how to use the new power abilities that we get. The Lantern boss basically is a, is a lantern corrupted by the purple slime. And it just releases its, uh, its bottom half with, with spikes. All you gotta do is just land a bomb right underneath it and just keep blowing it up to pieces. That's basically the chapter two bosses. Just learning how to use the ninja bombs ability. Come on, number 16, the Kraken. A Kraken? That's a sushi chef. Anybody else getting Monsters Incorporated vibes from this? The boss fight is pretty simple at best. I mean, you just gotta go... Basically, with the like the Vile Vine, you will have to... When the when the Kraken starts sucking you up, you just gotta hide in the in the in the in the dawn in the in the dawn bowls until the wind until he's done sucking, and then you gotta go through a certain sections and just snip off his tentacles, and all while on a sushi conveyor belt. Seriously, did they steal this from Monsters Inc? Number fifteen, General Dog. We finally reached another general on this list and it's my animal i am a dog 1994 and all honesty i like how they did him having to be the first boss of chapter five in 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 the in the cracker and the snacker box bog right out of halloweenville oh halloween town inspired and my animal what's not to love but all honesty, yeah, General Dog, not that much of a boss. He's basically a guard dog for the level. Yeah. And he's a robot, too. He speaks in a robotic voice, and he's very, very stupid. He's basically a, a, a downgrade version of what General Tiger is, with the attacks being the same, and you just gotta head slam his head in order to open his brain and then rip it out in order to end the boss fight. General Dog... You are one of my favorites, but bow wow, little buddy. Coming on number 14, the Gunslinger Weaver. This one takes place in, the C in Chapter 4, and it's honestly a cool one. It's basically a like a floating head thing with two guns, and it's little uh, poncho, kind of, that you gotta snip all of its badges off. Its attacks are pretty... kind of a... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, telegraphed because it shows the where the missiles and the guns are and the bullets are going throughout the ground. And then once you get on top of him, you just gotta slam his head in, and basically this gunslinger is shoot out of luck. Coming number thirteen, the gate weaver. This is the weaver right after you do a good majority of lanterns. It's kind of like a kind of looks like a bushido temple gate. And it's got, like, kinabos that bang around. 
and it will hit the drums that you're on and it will go wherever you go. And then there'll be like a golden one where if you throw the bomb, it will knock the guys, it will knock the gates face in. And then you got to go through the smoke and dodge some fire and some other uh, blades and just snip right through uh, the gate weaver. And that's pretty much it. Do that three times in this boss fight is pretty easy. And thankfully, it's a gate. It's the gateway to the better bosses on this list. So let's finish it off. Number 12, the Night Weaver. A step up of the Pawn Weaver, which just swings its blades at you. The Night Weaver does more. Having a unicorn for a head, it will slam into the ground and get its horn stuck, giving you the opportunity to go to the sides, jump, and then snip its cloth. And then you got to snip up to get chinks of its armor and cut it loose. Basically, all the Weaver bosses just cut all the soles afterwards, and you're pretty much good to go. Number 11, General Tiger. The first general boss fight is so high on the list. In all honesty, it's a great representation of what a first boss battle needs to be. He, it teaches you about guarding, about the getting telltale signs of the, of the attacks. And again, this one has two ways of making the attack the boss fight easy first you'll use the mace head to when, when he's using his mace attack to destroy his mace tail and relieve a fluff ball even though he electrifies it if you get hit by the fluff ball tail it will basically do no damage but he'll still come at you with his claws also if you have the picarina head basically all you gotta do is just do it when when you're supposed to snip up it's his hands and get to it and chip it chip its teeth yeah, it basically skips all that and you just go right to the uh, near the end of the boss fight. I prefer to do the boss fights first and then go back and do them with all the with all the uh, cheating ways. General Tiger, you got the eye of the tiger, but you don't. But it's not the thrill of the fight. Yeah, you think I was gonna do the Katy Perry song for this joke? Please, you're not gonna hear me roar. Come in number ten, General Rabbit. A f near the end of the game, boss, and think about it. Gen a, a, ah, a rabbit. What could they do? Oh, wait, they turn him into a Wonderland magician. Seriously, what is with doing rabbits as magicians in boss fights? I mean, this game's done it. Puppeteer's done it. If I see one more, it's literally going to be a hat trick. His boss fight is pretty simple. All you gotta do is just dodge his attacks and snip the car and ha and head slam some a deck of cards in order to go upstage where you'll have to snip down three tricks that will basically damage the magician himself. He'll be stuck in Houdini's water tank. His assistant. Well, if you turn the assistant into a vampire in a previous episode in a previous chapter she will go she will attack him and then there's the elephant which is all good fun there is is there a way oh yes if you want if you get the deck of card heads in the section before the boss fight you once you're up the backstage thing just use the card heads and it will basically finish off uh, uh, General Rabbit, and basically, yeah, what's up, Doc? Come in, number nine, the Pirate Weaver. Definitely one of the more harder, uh, weavers to fight. The beginning of chapter three, and all honesty, again, this one does it doesn't seem like this one was going to be more difficult, but it is. It will throw its cutlass at you multiple times. You will have to chop, slice up its pirate banner, but then you'll be on a floating platform that it's controlling where you will have to dodge the attacks and sh and reflect its... And then you will have to use the pirate hook to, to rang it in in order to, to get the souls out in order to feed it. Again, it's the platform section that gets really difficult because if you jump and it moves, you're basically done. So again, pirate pirate boss... Really interesting. Come on, number eight. The general horse boss fight. And horse, of course, 
of course, is a pain in the really... Okay, yeah, I can't really rhyme that. General Horse is a literal iron horse. Be that that she turns into a literal iron train. A steam train. And she kind of has a Latina accent for this because in Chapter 4, it is kind of in the wild, wild waste. So, what do you expect? And her boss fight, she stays in her train form. Basically spewing fire at you, launching rockets. Yeah, it's a robotic horse train. So what do you do? You just got to go around and around until you can get her to flip and then just head slam her a good number of times. The boss fight is really enjoyable. Every general boss fight has its own little mechanics and its own little tricks. And all of them, except for the three that were on the bottom are absolutely perfect. So it just keeps getting better from here on, ladies and gentlemen. Come in number seven, Generals Pig and General Generals Pig and Sheep. These guys work together in chapter three in the Moonshine Sea. And they are all pirate levels. I mean they are all pirates because it is a pirate-ish level. They even throw in a Captain Jack Sparrow look-alike. Why didn't they get Johnny Depp to voice this? Anyway, Pig and Sheep's boss fight is not what you would expect from some from lamb chop and some pork chops. They fight you in a giant robotic crab. I'm, I, if you're waiting for a punchline, I don't have one. That is literally the boss fight with Pig and Sheep. Basically, while you're, while the crab moves sideways, you will have to use the cook to unscrew the pirate the leg the legs uh, metal shell and then snip away all the electrical circuits. Once you do that for both the legs, yeah, there will be the hover mode where where you will have to, it's basically a UFO, and you will have to throw bombs into the tractor beam. Seriously, we've gone from Pirates to Star Trek. Have they ever done an episode like that? And then, once you snip the crab in half, the QTE battle continues. Also, if you want to skip the legs part, if you have the crab head, just use it, and it, a giant crab will snip off the legs for you, saving you a little time. Coming at number six, General Robodog. After G G General Dog's big defeat and General Monkey managed to trick Kutaro in and obtaining all the Moonstone pieces from the previous generals, he did a little experiment with Dog and turned him into Robo Dog. Whereas Dog looked more canine-ish, General Dog has a bulldog or has a bulldog kind of look. And this boss fight is honestly ten times better than the original General Dog, swinging his tail at you swinging his tail at you, stomping his paws, uh, using electric beams at you because he he's in a scientific lab, which is all honestly awesome. And then once you defeat his first part, he will remove his legs and go into a jet mode, kind of. Which, all honesty, this sounds like over the top. Like, like the people of this game went over the top with the boss fights in most unique ways possible. And I'm telling you, there isn't a boss fight like this in any other game. Also, if you fix the TV during the fight and you have the Reaper head, you can do that to eliminate the legs so you can get right to the jet battle. And the jet, releasing rockets at you, more attacks, and the QTE section is honestly a, is such a great battle and such a great QTE moment. I also like the added fact that as you as you go through the stages of the boss fight, you can see the pieces of the stones are coming out of his collar. So that is a nice appreciated detail in this boss fight. Come at number five, General Bull. He is honestly one of the hardest bosses I've had in this game. And it shows. Battling him in a coliseum, you will just have, like, you will just run around as he charges at you. You basically have to get high into the air. He will come toward you and then chase after you. And you will have to head slam to bring the thing up in order to get his horn stuck. And then you will have to slam him. He kind of looks like a, okay, yes, 
Look at this image. A bulldozer. Had enough of the joke yet? Yeah. I like how every boss has that different. Some look paper mache, some look mechanical, and I love that. He And as you damage him, he gets more broken and his whole body gets all purpley red with anger and I love it. The, the one way to to skip this section and just be, do the do the QTE to end the boss fight is if you get the castanets, General Horse will come in because they they were married and beat the crap out of them. Which if we defeated her in in Curtain Two of Chapter Four, how can she? Uh, you know what? It's they're all cast members on a show, so she just comes in to beat the crap out of her hubby. Ah, uh, nah, nah. There's no joke there. Oh, next. At number four is, I'll honestly, I did not think this boss, I would, I would love this boss fight, and, but it's one of the most difficult ones before I get to the top three. General Rooster, yes, a freaking cockerel gets on this list, and if that's not a dirty word, that is a pronounced, that is what a rooster is. Look it up if you don't believe me. This guy is with General Rabbit, and he's a psych he's a crazy Wonderland-ish rooster where we will have to chase up a tower and he lays eggs in order to attack us. Which doesn't make sense. But his boss fight is freaking amazing. Not only will he stop us with his flaming talons. He will also do a whirlwind attack at us with his feathers, which we will need to snip. He will p take pieces out of the gr out of the uh, the balcony and stack them and push them towards us in order to push us off the edge. If you get the gargoyle statue head, you will be able to freeze him once you get the uh, yeah once you get the gargoyles out, and you will be able to f petrify him in order to make the boss fight a little bit easier. But then, as you start snipping his feathers and his wings, the boss fight, he grows flaming wings! A rooster, part rooster, part phoenix, part psycho. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, ladies and gentlemen, and this boss fight is proof that insanity sometimes is the better way to go. Number three is the final weaver of the game, the Grim Reaper Weaver in Chapter 5. And oh my god, it is so creepy seeing it, but it's beautiful. It's design. It's got the scythe attack. It can't, the only way to, to beat it is to shine moonlight at him, which you can only do if you grab its hourglass and flip it upside down. Or, in or this is the only Weaver boss fight that that has a head animation to make the boss fight easier. Basically, get the angel head, do the do the head motion, and the the moon's light will pierce through the clouds and shine right onto the Reaper, leaving him weak. So all you gotta do is just snip every single soul, and the Reaper is done. Don't fear the reaper. Mostly because this one is us. I mean, if you don't do the angel head, the boss fight does take a lot longer to do because you will have to keep flipping that hourglass, getting it from the reaper's possession, dodging all of his attacks, and all honesty, it's such a cool boss fight. It's such a cool... And plus, it's the best weaver boss fight. And it's the last one of the game. So it makes sense to be high on the list. Number two, the Moon Bear King himself. The final boss of the game is not the hardest boss, nor is it my favorite, but all honesty, it's basically one of the... It's basically... Okay, yeah, it's number two, so it's obviously great. Because this is what a final boss is. Unfortunately, I, this is what a final boss is. and It takes everything you've learned about the game and how to do the boss fights... And, and takes it and and takes pushes it through having the moon bear king grow giant every section you will be dealing with a different part of his body 
First, you will deal with his feet, then with his torso, and then his head. After after snipping it away in glorious uh, QTE events. Plus, with his scepter being electric, you gotta time the jumping right the same way you did with General Tiger's tail. So it takes reference from other boss fights and implements it into the final boss. By throwing bombs under his stomping feet, by using the pirate hook to, to unscrew his belly button jewel, I don't really understand that, to once again to getting him to stick his teeth into the ground and head slam hit the back of his head. The boss fight is just enormous and immense, but it's not number one. Number one, General Dragon. The best boss in, the, in Puppeteer is General Dragon. The final good general boss, and honestly, one of the cooler ones. Yes, his boss fight is technically... A section like General Monkey and General Snake boss fights I didn't like, but it does it better. At the beginning of the fight, you will be going along General Dragon's back via the thunder clouds and the freaking volcano erupting. While all while on the very talkative Mr. Pink, the flamingo from the chapter from in the chapter of this boss fight. But going through it, it's fantastic. It's not kind of slow and fighting enemies like on General Snake's back. Dragon's back is full of spikes that you gotta dodge, rubber sections where you can jump and dodge. And then when you get to the actual boss fight, he's just menacing Chinese dragon. And then when you get to him, you just gotta dodge his fire attacks, defeat some of the enemies on the clouds, throw bombs at him, break his body in half as you snip through it, and then he has a Brooklyn accent. No, seriously. This menacing Chinese dragon sounds like he's from Goodfellas. I'm not kidding you. Play the game. He will have a Brooklyn accent, mostly because he calls the boss the Bear Father. The minute I heard his voice, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This giant dragon, because he doesn't speak until you get to his boss fight section. He sounds like a, a mobster wannabe. And it just adds to the humor of the boss fight. And it's just beautifully done. For, and this is why he's number one. The, from, the, from, the, from the challenge to get to his boss fight alone... The boss fight itself, which can be difficult at times if you're not so precise and paying attention to your entire surroundings, and added to his the performance of the actor who did the voice, and the QTE moments are freaking badass as all heck. General Dragon deserves to be on the top of the list because he is the best boss fight in the game because it gives everything every boss fight has and then some. And that's it for this list, of it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining in. Like, comment, subscribe down below. Go pick up Puppeteer if you can find it. I hope they remaster it for the PS4. And I hope Japan Studio gives us another version, another story of this. This type of gaming is something I miss. And join me next week where the sequel of one of another personal favorite game of mine from the Yakuza series comes into play and next week we go we go into the darkest depths of Kamarocho, I think is the town, where we see where judgment will lead us. This is Gamer K logging out.